We'll just kick off with Paul Levesque because he was interviewed by Ariel Helwani recently and was asked a, a battery of questions, and here are some of the highlights from it. It's put up on the front page by our own Josh Nason. Uh, he was asked, Triple H was, if he felt the re rebranding of NXT was punishment for losing the Wednesday Night Wars to AEW. And Triple H responded, no, people put so much pressure on this this competitive war. It never was that. First of all, they, they beat our development... <laughs> They beat our developmental system. Good for them. And it's I saw this clip of how he said this because it's, you know, first of all, they, they beat our developmental system. Good for them. You know, with the Triple H face, you know, the wrinkles going in the head, you know, blew off the whole thing. Then he responded, no, it never was that. There never was even pressure of you have to beat that. It was just put on the best product that you could. I think everybody remembers and everybody knows the receipts are there where Triple H was doing his job as the director of NXT and saying that, no, NXT was a third brand. It, it wasn't the developmental brand. It, it's Raw, it's SmackDown, and it's, it's NXT. And, of course, we kind of knew that to be true, although you did have your Adam Coles and your Finn Balors and your Samoa Joes and plenty of other people that were also involved in that mix, but it was also to develop younger talent. It was developed people that were coming in off the indies that they wanted to try to start working a WWE style. So obviously Triple H is just being Triple H when it comes to talking about AEW and when it comes to talking about NXT and the fact that they did get beaten like a drum by, by AEW. But there is a kernel of truth in what he says. And I don't think anybody, because I've seen people kind of react, you know, a little bit, probably too emotionally to what Triple H is saying here. I mean, what do you expect this guy to say? To, to come out there and give a bunch of flowers to AEW and tell them they're really... No, they're the lead pack. They should probably just ignore them altogether. And he did what he did to blow off the question from Helwani. You know, does he does answer, you know, everything is competition to us. We pay attention to everything. You have to. Do we pay attention to AEW? Do I watch it on a week-to-week -week basis? No. Am I aware of what's going on there? To a degree. I bet you Paul Levesque is uh, much more in tune to what goes on in, a in AEW than he's going to let on to. These are just comments that he's saying to Ariel Helwani, which, again, just kind of dusts AEW under the rug a, a little bit while he's speaking. But nobody should be surprised about any of this. He did talk about bringing NXT Europe back in a bigger way than it ever was before. And, you know, he wants to do NXT India, NXT South Africa, NXT Mexico. They've talked about doing all of these things before. NXT Japan. And it'll be interesting to see now that NXT Europe is going to be a thing and now that he is in control and he was a fan of doing satellites of the performance center all over the world it'll be interesting to see if those thoughts come back you know Mako Satomura is still part of your roster she could go back to Japan and become a trainer there's a million things that you could do there so it'll be interesting for me to see exactly where this NXT Europe thing goes and exactly how they go about it because they're going to have a tough time in Mexico, and they're going to have a tough time in Japan. I mean, that's for sure. But it doesn't feel like to me that they're going to be stopping doing that. And one place where they've gotten and where wrestling has gotten lucky in the last few years has been Australia and New Zealand. And it'll be very interesting to see if... WWE decides to kind of dig its tentacles there. You know, that's a place where New Japan is doing very well right now. We've seen a lot of people, whether it be Aussie Open or Bad Luck Fale and, and, and a lot of these guys that, that are coming out from down there, you know, Robbie Eagles. There's a lot of guys there where, you know... We'll see how it goes, but there's a lot of talent there, a lot of women's talent. Look how many women have you know gone, and we've made jokes about they come out of Australia, they go right to Lance Storm to be trained, and then they end up in WWE. There's there's been a lot of women, so I'll be interested to see if they if they if and when they decide to make a move in that direction. Something that got a lot of attention, of course, Triple H was asked about some people uh, like Sasha Banks and Bray Wyatt and Braun Strowman all of which left WWE in different ways. And when asked about Banks, Levesque responded, time will tell. I think in a lot of ways, communication breakdowns are terrible. 
Yeah, they usually are. Uh, there was a communication breakdown there for whatever reason. Starting back up that communication is not a difficult process, but it can be a process and you have to go through the process. But she's an unbelievably talented woman who can do just about anything she wants. It just comes down to what does she want to do now? She's an unbelievable performer. I believe that with everything that I have. I'm not sure if Ariel asked him about Naomi, but uh, her her name was not brought up. Braun Strowman's, though, was. And obviously, we've had the reports this week that he will be back in WWE, uh, possibly beginning on Monday night. Triple H responded, Braun, we'll see. He's a polarizing person a little bit, be, uh, sometimes in the business. But for a guy his size, what he brings to the table, he's an amazing athlete. If this is what he wants to do at the highest of levels, then I would like nothing more than to give him another shot. We'll see how that goes. I said it yesterday. I hope Braun Strowman coming in. It's more of a short-term thing because I've seen Braun Strowman against a lot of those guys already, and I'm not sure I want to see any more of it. I know he's a bigger, more athletic guy in comparison to some of the other people that they have, and I'm not saying that he can't be a killer there, but we'll see how it works. I'm not really over the moon about the thoughts of him coming back. I've never been over the moon about the thoughts of Bray Wyatt coming back, at least in the Bray Wyatt character, but he was asked about Bray as well, and he says, one of the most, and I mean this in the best possible way, crazy creative people I've ever been around. Mine just never stops thinking of creative, but it's like being in a whirlwind of stuff. So without the harness and without someone to point the tornado, it's just all over the place. He's a victim of his own mind and creative. But I love working with him, so not really much of an answer there. Uh, the reports are there about Braun. The reports have been there about Sasha Banks. Could we see Sasha and Naomi show up at Clash at the Castle uh, to, to challenge the, the tag team champions? Could we see them show back up on Raw this Monday? Could Braun be not the only surprise that we see and we get them back? I don't know. But Bray Wyatt, unlike the other two, has not been talked about as being close to coming back to WWE. So he still has not gone out and done anything else. I know he's been active a little bit on his social media. I think it's Wyndham Six or something like that. But it'll be interesting to see if they if he does come back, what role he'll be coming back as. Will it be Bray Wyatt? Will it be a completely new other type of, of character? I guess we'll have to see. Ariel also uh, asked about Brock Lesnar walking out that that fateful day that Vince announced his retirement. We heard the story that Brock stormed out of SmackDown and said, if he's gone, I'm gone. And while Levesque didn't specifically share the exact wording, he did say that Lesnar did have a moment of doubt when he heard that McMahon was stepping down from his WWE duties because, quote, Vince is the devil he knows. He said that Lesnar took his time to digest everything. There were conversations. He did his business that night, and they had long conversations about the future. In the end, everything between the two is all good. And, of course, Lesnar would go on to lose the WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns at SummerSlam that week, and he has not been back on TV since. I have a feeling as we get closer to the Royal Rumble, that will be changing. All I have is a few questions. Oh, good. My favorite. Is it duplex or suplex? Or is it both? A wrestling move where you <laughs> grab your opponent and throw him backwards through the air is a suplex. A housing complex with two homes built connected is a duplex. Yeah, it's never been duplex, Granny, but you've you've said this now for 15 okay, years, so we just I, yeah, let, yeah. It, let it go. Yeah. So I thought once and for all, I want to know which it is. So it's duplex and not suplex, right? No, a it's, suplex it's is suplex a suplex and not duplex. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> duplex is a housing development, Granny. Ulysses S. Grant's battle we, scars. We, we definitely read these. Skip forward no, a few pages. No, no, no. Okay, no. all right, all right, go ahead. We didn't do this one. Okay. Yeah, this person says we did. This person says we did it. I protest. There must be two of them then. <laughs> I protest. <laughs> he wrote the same one twice. Yeah. I like this one about Grant so much. I'm going to put it in the book twice. I, I'm telling you, I wasn't back this time. Okay, far. fine. Read another one. Yeah, everyone's saying we read these last week, Granny. Big deal. <laughs> Who cares, but everybody? All the, but all the researchers today. Are you reading the book the wrong way? 
No. Okay. What do you think I am? <laughs> I don't know. You keep saying you're going back. <laughs> Why would we go back when reading a book? We're supposed to go forward. Maybe what happens, Granny, is you put the bookmark in, and then when you open it to that page, you start reading the ones we already read. Maybe the bookmark should go on the next page. No. Okay. <laughs> what do they say in court? I object. I object. Objection, Your Honor. Yeah, that's right. I didn't read that again. Overruled, Granny, you did. <laughs> All right. Anything else, Granny? You're guilty. <laughs> well. <laughs> go, to, go to jail. Your guilty was the high spot of the week. Oh, you shut me off. No. Oh, you're right here. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? There was some weird rumbling going on. Like uh -oh. she, she's unplugging her own cord there. I think you unplugged the cord. I can't hear you. you, you can you hear me? Can you hear me? I, I'll message you. I'll message you. I hear you now. Oh, now you do? Yeah, now I hear <laughs> <laughs> What happened? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I don't know. Ah! All right. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.